Thank you. So first of all, thanks for the organizers for this uh, nice workshop and also uh, for the opportunity to uh, talk here. So I'll be talking about a concept called digitized counter-diabetic quantum computing. So this is uh, actually inspired from a, a concept called so short custodial diabetes. So recently, there are some advancement in this field. I will talk about what is short custodial diabetes. And this recent advancement actually you know, motivated us, us to apply this technique in quantum computing. And uh, I'll be showing some of the, I'll be talking. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so here's the outline of my talk, and uh, I will start by uh, uh, recalling the concept of adiabatic quantum computation, which most of you might be aware. Of, and uh, I will talk about what is counter-diabetic protocol, and I will discuss about a special technique called digitized counter-diabetic quantum optimization uh, using the bias field. And finally, I will show some experimental results with a trapped ion quantum system with the 36 fully connected qubit and, and some experiment with uh, up to 100 qubits for some spin glass uh, problems. So to begin with, uh, the adiabatic quantum computation is one of the universal model of quantum computing. So basically, the idea is that any computational problem of interest can be molecular ground state or some optimization problem. So the solution to this computational problem is encoded in the ground state of some many body Hamiltonian. So the target is to find this ground state. And for that, we start with some initial Hamiltonian and we, and, uh, we the adiabatic theorem says that if your evolution is slow enough, you will end up in the ground state of the final Hamiltonian with very high success probability. And this is the time dependent Hamiltonian which describes this evolution. And the runtime of this algorithm mainly depends on the energy gap between the ground state and the first excited state. And it's inversely related to the uh, uh, runtime of the algorithm. If the gap is smaller, the runtime will be large. And the gap is large, the runtime will be small. But in uh, reality, in many cases, for hard problems, uh, as you increase the system size, the gap becomes drastically smaller. So this increases the runtime of the algorithm. And when you go to a quantum computer and you try to realize this, so the coherence time is one of the main limits. So you have a limited coherence time and you can evolve actually your system for a very long time. This will result in some uh, decoherence effect and other dividers. So on the other hand, if you, okay, I will restrict my evolution to the coherence time and you evolve, the, uh, you do not rely on the adiabatic condition and you evolve your system faster, this will result in excitation between uh, energy, uh, uh, you are, you know, ground state in the excited states. So this reduces the quality of your solution. So the question is, is there a way where I can evolve the system faster at the same time, can we reduce this uh, excitations so that I stay in the ground state and I will get the solution with the very high success probability. And the answer is yes. And there comes this concept of uh, short custodial obesity. Yeah, short custodial diabetes and there are various techniques of short custodial diabetes and I will be talking about a particular concept called counter-diabetic driving, counter-diabetic protocol. So the idea of counter-diabetic protocol is that you have a, you know, fast evolving Hamiltonian, which is introducing non-adiabetic excitation and you introduce an additional term which compensate for this excitation. So which, you know, suppresses this transition between eigenstate so that you stay in the ground state. And this concept was not new and it was uh, introduced like uh, almost two decades back, back in, you know, in 2003 by Demir Plak and Rice, they come up with this concept of counter-diabetic protocols and later by uh, Berry, he called it transitionless quantum driving. So in principle, if you can exactly find this term or here a lambda is actually known as adiabatic gauge potential and lambda dot is like a velocity dependent term. So how fast you are evolving. So if you can exactly calculate this term somehow, and if you can implement it in principle, you can evolve your system as fast as you want. So only speed, uh, you know, constraint is given by quantum speed limit. But in reality, the thing is that calculating this term for a many, many body Hamiltonian is very challenging task. It requires the knowledge of instantaneous eigenstate. So that is one of the main drawback to, you know, use this concept for adiabatic quantum computing. So in adiabatic quantum computing, you are interested in the ground state. You want to find the ground state. And if you have already have the knowledge of this instantaneous eigenstate, that means you already solved the problem. 
So that's why, so that is one of the main uh, limitation. On, on the other side, somehow you calculate this and uh, you obtain this term. Realizing this in experimentally is a very challenging task for many body system because this contains, you know, uh, for many body problems, you have non-local multi-qubit interaction terms. So that makes this one of the uh, challenging, you know, to even realize this experimentally. I'm talking about analog quantum computers. So how to overcome this challenge? And there comes the, there was several works, uh, you know, after uh, this initial proposal, there are several works to approximate this contradiabetic terms because the exact one has a lot of issues as I discussed. And back in 2017, uh, Anatoly Polkonikov and cells, they came up with a, an approximate variational approach to calculate this contradiabetic term. And uh, yeah, so that, the advantage of this method is that it does not require any knowledge of the instantaneous eigenstates. So that is the main, you know, so that's like a Eureka moment. You can apply it to you now quantum computing now, uh, adiabatic quantum computing now. And secondly, this exact, even the exact counter-diabetic term can also be approximated. I mean, can be written as a sum of nested commutator. This was back in 2019 uh, in a PRL paper. They said, you can actually write this adiabatic gauge potential as a sum of nested commutator, where L is the order of your expansion. So depending on the accuracy that you need, you can choose this L and this is how the first order nested commutator looks like. And this was the time back, uh, sorry. So this was the time when I joined PST back in 2019 with my uh, supervisor, Enrique Solano. And, uh, and I found one of his work with Google with John Martinez. So they did this uh, digitized adiabatic quantum computing in superconducting device with uh, nine qubits. So I was also reading this concept and I thought, okay, why not introduce a new concept called digitized counter-diabetic quantum computing. So you have the unitary, the continuous evolution with the counter-diabetic term. You digitize this using the totalization and you can implement this product of metric exponential as one and two qubit gates, or you can also go for pulse, pulse based implementation. Why digitization? So even though we approximated the counter-diabetic terms, you know, depending on the accuracy you need, the terms that appear in this nested commutator, how, you know, uh, uh, a complicated structure. Realizing this in analog manner is, is, is a really difficult task. Even uh, 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 existing quantum annealers cannot do that. And that is one of the main motivation. Also, another thing is that uh, with this flexibility that the digital quantum computer gives you, you can go for, you can invent many other things that I will be discussing later. So. These are some of the motivation for going from purely analog approach to the digital approach because the digital approach gives you the flexibility to realize arbitrary counter-diabetic terms and also non-local and uh, something called non-stochastic interactions can be realized in a digital manner. So that is one of the another motivation because existing quantum annealers cannot realize non-stochastic terms. Uh, basically, non-stochastic Hamiltonians are the ones with uh, whose off-diagonal matrix elements are uh, uh, positive or imaginary. So these type of uh, Hamiltonians are very hard to realize in analog quantum computers like uh, D-Wave or some red web based quantum computers. So that is one of uh, also one of the advantage, and later it helps us to you know exploring potential of uh, some hybrid approaches to de uh, develop this count hybrid digitized counter-diabetic approaches for various other applications. So that is the motivation of this digitized counter-diabetic quantum computing. So to move on, so I will be discussing about a one particular example of the application of this counter-diabetic protocol for a, a spin glass Hamiltonian, a classical spin glass Hamiltonian, where you have this interaction term and the longitudinal fields where the coefficients are chosen randomly from some Gaussian distribution. And uh, you can choose your initial Hamiltonian as a, a, a transfer speed. You have the flexibility, you can choose what you, whatever you want. And the first order commutator and the state commutator approximation for the counter-diabetic term looks like this. As you can see, this contains odd number of sigma y terms. That makes it non-stochastic because this is uh, uh, imaginary of diagonal matrix elements. And we consider, we consider the problem of finding the 
ground state of the spin glass Hamiltonian, we introduce the simplest first order the counterdiabetic term. And we notice that for a finite time evolution, there is a polynomial scaling enhancement by using this even the first order nested commutator compared to without using, you know, uh, this is the digitized adiabatic evolution. And this is the evolution with the first order counterdiabetic term. You notice the polynomial scaling enhancement. In both the cases, the fidelity success probability is decreasing exponentially because the problem we consider is a hard problem of NP hard and, and it's expected that the fidelity or the success probability scales, uh, you know, decreases exponentially with system size and for a fixed time. But the exponential factor for the, uh, uh, the, uh, the CD evolution is smaller than the digitized adiabatic evolution, that's a polynomial scaling enhancement. And we went further and we analyzed uh, what is happening to the spectrum. So we analyzed, we did the spectral analysis and we noticed that inclusion of the counterdiabetic terms increases the gap. So it is not true in general because there are examples where it is not necessarily true, but for the optimization problem that we consider, for all the instances that we studied, you notice that inclusion of this first order counterdiabetic term increases the gap. That is a, that's an observation. So we went further and we come up with a concept called bias field. So, so the idea of digitized uh, uh, DCQC is that you start with an initial state, you evolve your system and you measure and that is your solution. So you extract the solution for your optimization problem. What if you take this solution and you feed it back and you do the same evolution again. So that is the concept of this bias field counterdiabetic term. So we have this evolution with counterdiabetic term and uh, we modify the initial Hamiltonian during each iteration by feeding back this expectation value in the Pauli Z basis. And this is what we have observed. So previously I have shown you there is a polynomial enhancement with respect to the digitized adiabatic evolution. Now we show uh, another polynomial enhancement with this bias field DCQO compared to the previously discussed DCQO. So it is the exponential factor is even smaller now. So again, a polynomial scaling enhancement, but it's the empirical evidence. And this is a purely digit, a purely quantum approach. So we are not using any classical optimization or uh, anything. So it's not a hybrid variational algorithm. So you overcome the, you know, uh, this hybrid algorithm, most of the time they face this trainability issues like uh, barren plateaus and uh, and so what we propose is a purely quantum approach just to compare with how it compares with the hybrid approaches. We consider QAOA is one of the widely used optimization, uh, approximate optimization algorithm and we compare the form performance. So here uh, I sh have shown this enhancement ratio, the ratio between what is the, you know, for example, for the success, for the success probability obtained with the bias field DCQO with respect to the QAOM. And it is also increasing with system size and almost two orders of enhancement has been observed in, in terms of success probability and around 1.3 uh, uh, by a factor of 1.3 in the approximation ratio for the spin glass instance that we study. And finally, I guess I have like one minute or two minutes. Yeah. Some experimental results. So we tested the robustness of this algorithm in the presence of noise. So we consider a fully connected 29 qubit uh, spin glass instance uh, and we run it on a, a ION Q40, it's an ICE device which mimics the actual hardware. And this is the iteration zero. And you can, this is the iteration after like 30 iterations. And you can see even in the presence of noise, the whole distribution is moving towards a better solution. And I guess in this case, we were able to actually achieve the exact ground state around uh, iteration 19. And to wrap up, so this is the uh, uh, experimental implementation on a full, uh, uh, 36 qubit uh, uh, ion Q hardware for a uh, problem called maximum weighted independent set problem. And uh, so this is the experimental results and the ideal results. So they agree very well. And also we consider a, a, a spin glass instant on a, a, a heavy hexagonal lattice of IBM, which matches the hardware connectivity so that we were able to go up to 100 qubits. So this is a 100 qubit experimental result. And this is the ideal simulation of bias field DCQO. And this is the experimental results. And uh, here I plotted the uh, uh, solution from Gurobi. It's a classical approximate uh, uh, optimization algorithm. And uh, 
we notice that the best result from Gurobi and the result what we obtained from uh, this pass field is a Q in the ideal case with just two total steps. In this case, we consider just two total steps and we were able to obtain the uh, solution which matches the classical algorithm. Experimentally, we are not because we, we could have done many error mitigation and other techniques which we haven't used here. So, yeah. So, these are the experimental details like two total steps and uh, a thousand shot. It's just a thousand shot for a hundred qubit experiment. Okay. So, as a remark, there are many things to explore in this field. And uh, one thing is uh, going for higher order counter diabetic terms. All the results I have shown is for just the first, first order net nested commutator. And also, there are many, you can use the hybrid approach, which I haven't discussed today. And uh, can we show a provable quantum speed up? That is one thing we are looking because the counter diabetic terms for this optimization problems are non stochastic. And non stochastic terms are hard to simulate classically uh, because of this uh, famous sign problem of quantum Monte Carlo. So that's why we are still looking into that. And we also go for not the purely digital approach. We are working on something called digital analog approach. And also we are uh, exploring various uh, applications of this topic. And finally, so this is uh, some of my co-workers. So we are a, a, a quantum computing startup in Berlin. So it's close to Prenzlauerberg near the center. So we have many open uh, positions. If you're interested, please apply. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you very much for a very nice talk. So we have time so for short questions. So. Uh, thank you very much for the, for the nice talk. So my question is, um, you showed one example where uh, using essentially the first commutator for, to approximate the, uh, the platic gauge potential is already working pretty well. But for standard, like non-integrable many-body systems, I think usually people saw that one needs to go to higher order commutators. And I was just wondering if you address this problem and how do you uh, cope with it since to digitize something like that, I guess you would need that, you would end up in some overhead of uh, gates. Yes, so basically increasing the order of the nested commutator also increases the locality of your Hamiltonian. So the locality of the uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So this requires additional gates. So as you can see, we are introducing an additional term to the Hamiltonian. You need additional gate to realize these uh, terms. So for optimization, we consider first order. First order, it works pretty well. And uh, but uh, we might face some issues when we go for you know larger and larger system uh, where higher order terms might be necessary. One way is to resolve this instead of going for directly higher order, you can use tensor network method to approximate and choose the correct which order is significant, and you can uh, boost the algorithm for that is one direction where we are looking at. And it is true that not only for a non-integrable model, also for some uh, electronic ground state problem, first order is not just not enough. We have studied for some large molecules, first order will not give you the required chemical accuracy, which is not a good. Uh, yeah, so higher order terms are necessary and we are uh, uh, trying to approximate it in a different way, not using nested commutator. Okay, so yes, uh, questions. So if I understand correctly, local in the local counter diabetic driving refers to time local. Um, but and this goes, I think, along the similar lines as the previous question. Can you comment on um, how local or non-local you have to be in terms of the, the tensor product structure of Hilbert space when you have a many body system like your spin chain? Yeah, for the example that I have shown uh, the Hamiltonian, Problem Hamiltonian is too local. It's a spin glass with uh, only quadratic terms. And uh, the first order uh, commutator, what we get is also quadratic. So it's, it matches the locality of the problem Hamiltonian. So you go for second order. Second order, we notice that it's like four local terms. So that uh, as you go for higher order, the locality actually increases. And how it increases depends on your problem Hamiltonian. It's completely depend on the problem Hamiltonian. 